Hello, love bugs, to another video by me, Nancy, from Cybugs, a channel where we just talk about bugs. Today, we are going to be using this photo as a case study for how to look at nature photos in general with a critical and with a slightly skeptical eye. Images pop up on social media and are widely shared. Many of these images are faked. Many of these images are staged. Many of these photos aren't even of real insects. There are so many textile art insects that aren't real insects that people think are real insects because the textile art is just that good, which is pretty amazing. I'm going to be showing you my thought process for how this image was created and how I could tell that it was a fake or photoshopped from the beginning. Here is where this image was shared in my learning community, the Sci Hive. I don't mind this at all. I love when people post art and I love when people ask questions and I love when people post things that inspire and spark discussion and learning. So I am very happy that this image is here and plus it gave fodder for a video. So thanks Dave. Okay, so there's a couple things to note first, like right off the bat that make me a little bit suspicious. The first thing is, is that it's a viral photo. I remember seeing this photo a couple years ago, and that doesn't necessarily mean that it's fake, but a lot of times viral images are viral because they're astounding or overly the top amazing or just seem perfect. And the second thing that makes me really skeptical is just how perfect this photo looks. Why would the butterfly land on the skull? How would it land right there? If it was placed there and alive, how would the guy like keep the butterfly there and snap the photo and get the lighting right and, and, and. I love these kind of photos. I love eye spots. I've lived in the jungle for like four years. I lived in the heart of the jungle for two years. And I always try and get pictures of moths with their eye spots over my eyes and I'm fighting with living animals and it's been four years and I have yet to find a picture or do a picture of myself with one of these over my eyes that I really like. I'm not saying that it's impossible, I'm just saying that it's very improbable. I'm a little bit skeptical, not only because I know it's a viral post, but it just seems a little bit too perfect. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to check to see who posted it and if we can glean any other information. So I'm gonna click this person. This is just a regular profile. File. However, they seem to post a lot of viral things. None of what is posted seems to be his and seems to be a variety of different things. It seems that he does give credit on the things that he may know where it's from, like especially these older works of art. However, this post from June 4th doesn't have any other information. Now we have to go to Google. You can reverse Google image search. However, I try and find things with words first. And fortunately, I got a hit. The internet is not great here, so I left all the tabs up so you'll just see my thought process. The first thing I did was just type in skull photo butterfly in eye socket and see where that got us. I then opened those images in Google and a lot of them are actually all from Pinterest. I recommend going through Pinterest because a lot of times it brings you to the quote original page or where that poster found the image. But eventually I stumbled on a little bit of useful information on this Pinterest page which came to dangerousminds.net which I then clicked on and here's the image with a little description. I'm not a big skull art fan but I dig this photograph of a wee butterfly, or is that a moth? Landing inside the eye socket of a human skull. Butterfly or moth? We're gonna talk about that a little bit later in this video, so keep watching. Well, we have an author. So this photographer, Marco, has called this image oko, which is the Polish word for eye. I don't speak Polish. I'm sure I sound dumb, so someone let me know <laughs> how badly I pronounce that word. So we have an author, that's really good. I also fell down a rabbit hole eventually on Reddit with the same image and I really like Reddit because it has a lot of like detective types on it that are really invested in discovering the mysteries. But the one that really stood out to me is, is this the guy that freezes butterflies, frogs, lizards, and then glues them or ties them to stuff for his photos? I know he does a lot of butterflies and glues them to their head and stuff. And then someone said, exactly my thought. This seems far too staged. Someone else wrote, if that's true, he's a sick <laughs> This is a thing that happens a lot in nature photography, but I personally don't partake in that type of photography because I don't like hurting the animals. I have left a link talking about some of those really unbelievable viral photos that you see, explaining how a lot of those pictures are taken 
So if you're interested in learning more and being more skeptical about other types of viral photos, you can read that for yourself down there. Is this a dead butterfly that's been glued? Is it a Photoshop butterfly? Is it some combination of the three? Because if we go back to this image, I'm not saying I know every butterfly species in the whole world. There's 20,000 butterfly species. But to me, it seems to be a little bit of a centaur organism. The legs aren't quite right for some butterfly groups. I haven't seen an eye spot that's that color on a butterfly like this. Eye spots are normally yellow. You do see a couple blue ones like in polyphemus moths and in io moths. They have a slightly different shape, for example. The eye spot is kind of weird and the positioning of the eye spot is kind of weird and the shape of the wings are kind of weird. Even if this is a real organism, it looks more like a CGI centaur to me than maybe a dead specimen. But it could be a dead specimen as the base model that's then had a lot of Photoshop work done to it. Now we have the possibility of it CGI or Photoshop for like realsies. We have the name of the author and we have the name of the piece. With all of that Google foo, I found this guy's Flickr page and I found the image. I want to look at this image as an entomologist perspective, not as a Photoshop artist perspective. I dabble a little bit in some like traditional medium art, but I don't dabble a lot in Photoshop. Okay, so there's a couple things going on immediately that I noticed. The first is really closely you can see the shadow of the two antennae, but it looks like with some sort of artifact it has three antennae. The butterfly itself here, at least the body, looks pretty real. So I'm thinking that a couple organisms were composited or mashed together in layers, something like that. Um, the other thing is it kind of like looks a little bit like a nymphalid body maybe, which are the brush-footed butterflies, but kind of the wing shape of a period, which are the sulfurs and whites or the skippers. And more importantly on the body, there's some leg mishap happening. So the knowing the family is helpful because nymphalids, the brush-footed butterflies, they have two legs that are modified and pulled up into the front of them. So it looks like the butterfly only has four legs when it's just standing. They use those brush feet to clean off the tongue and to clean off the eyes and the face and all that good jazz. There are some butterflies that only look like they have four legs. However, this does not appear to be one of them. But if you look at this front leg right here, it kind of does something weird in the body. It's connecting to the wrong part. It should be connecting to the other side of the body because there's this front leg thing right here. There's some weird leg stuff that's going on. This should probably be the back leg, in which case it looks like it's missing a leg off the back here. It just looks a little weird. The third thing, where is the abdomen? Sometimes the abdomen is hidden by the wings. That's not super uncommon. The abdomen would have to be like pointed up like this for that to be hidden up there. To me, it just kind of looks like the thorax just stops. And that happens a lot in dead specimens. Here's a morpho butterfly, for example. Um, and they cut the abdomen off of this one. And that's because the abdomen, when it's usually on the butterfly and the butterfly is preserved, one, it can rot if it's not done properly. And two, it distracts from like how beautiful the wings are. This is not a morpho butterfly. This is a swallowtail. Um, the abdomen is kept intact. It doesn't look quite as shiny and pretty and nice as this morpho butterfly one. Maybe that was a dead specimen or perhaps the abdomen is just ticked up at a weird angle. Weird stuff with the abdomen, regardless. And then we look at the wing shape here. It kind of reminds me of a skipper butterfly, maybe a period, which are the sulfur and white butterflies. But even from the side angle, looking at those butterflies, you should be able to see a distinct lineation on the hind wing. If we look at this one, you can clearly see the fore wing and then this round thing right here is the hind wing. Even on some more of these like yellowy ones, you can still see a little bit of the reflection right here where that hind wing has curled around. The other butterfly model I thought it could be would be a skipper butterfly. Even still with that wing shape here, you can see like the hind wing delineated right there. You can clearly see the hind wing delineated on this one right here. To me, when looking back at this photo, it looks like there is no hind wing where there should have been one is this kind of weird fold and then the, just the rest of the wing veins. They just look like a forewing wing vein. They don't necessarily look like a 
true hind wing wing vein. And also we are left with this eye spot. You know, there's some IO moths with this eye spot, very similar, polyphemus moths with this eye spot, not exactly similar. There's some morphos that have the shape of this eye spot, but not necessarily the color. It looks like the color of this eye spot has also been a little bit manipulated, and there's also not really a lot of butterflies with eye spots on the forewing on the outside of the wing like that at least not in that shape, that size, and alone. This is most likely Photoshop. However, if we look at the comments, we can see here, Jaina asks, so fantastic. Any idea what species of butterfly this is? And the author writes, it is a composed one made of three different butterfly species. So there you go, he didn't tell us which butterfly species it is, but we know this is a cool photo. It is not of a real specimen. I'm not saying the photo has to be of a real specimen to be interesting. There's a lot of creativity that went into this and a lot of work. So I'm not denying that at all. I really like this image. However, this image is not of a real specimen and is what happens with a lot of viral images and people want to monetize and make a lot of money off of it so they'll cut off the watermark. One of the ways that I could tell this was the author was not only like this is the author's name and the name of the picture but also the watermark matches all of the information. If we look back on the one that we opened, they actually cut off the watermark which is super common for viral images. Just because it has the watermark doesn't necessarily mean it was the original author. Sometimes the page will cut off the original watermark and then put their own watermark on top of it. Please don't steal other people's photos. They put a lot of time and energy into this. Just the fact that like the watermark matches the names and the Facebook page and you know we found the author and the name matches what we found in other places. Most likely I would say like 99.9% .9 chance this is the correct author. Again this is a fantastic image. This is not an image of a real butterfly. However that doesn't make the artistic quality of this image any less. I think this is really important because there are insect behaviors that are misrepresented. There are these kind of, oh my God, look at this. Can you believe I got this shot kind of thing? There are insects that are actually art. They look so real that people share them as real insects. Or the images are composited of multiple different insects and highly photoshopped. I would really prefer if these images were accompanied by a description about how the image was made. And so that way there's a lot more transparency and scientific accuracy on the internet. I hope that you like that deconstruction of a viral image. If you like this kind of video, feel free to like it and subscribe so you can see more of them. But also, if you have an image that you want me to look at, feel free to send it to my social media DMs. All of the places that I'm on social media is in the description box below. If you're interested and want to know if the insect that you're seeing is real or the behavior that you're seeing is real, feel free to send it to my DM. I'd be very happy to talk about any of these images. And I can't wait to see you all next week. Bye!